All right. Here we are. Welcome to another episode of the Crawl USA podcast. It's uh, been a while. We're slacking, but our uh, our fall resolution is to do better. After uh, some feedback from our friends, we'll um, we'll try to do a better job of getting these cranked out. And um, do let us know if you have any ideas for topics or things that you'd like to open a discussion on. Um, preferably something we know a little bit about, which is not much. I'm Scott. I'm Jason. Welcome back. All right. Uh, today, it's a very, I think, interesting topic. I had a real point of view on it until this past weekend. Uh, so let's talk about rock stacking. Yeah. And I've, uh, in fact, uh, I think the suggestion that, uh, somebody made in one of the prior comment sections of the podcast was moving rocks, which I assume includes stacking. But I think he was referring to actually eliminating them from the path, right? Um, which we've seen too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Eliminating from the path. Uh, all right. Let's take that one first. Let's say eliminating rocks from your path. Right. That's that's pretty wild, I think. Yeah. Well. To step back a little bit further, why do people do it in the first place? I mean, why would you move a rock off the trail? Because you can't get over it. Because you can't get over it. And why is that? Uh, I, I think my first answer would be an experience more than anything. Yeah. Right? Not belt, not anything. And, Shouldn't be there, maybe. Um, what I've seen is that people don't uh, really do their homework on a trail and they get in over their heads. And so what we've seen, and we've actually seen videos of this, why somebody would put a video of their group doing this on social media, but we've seen it. Um, they get on a trail with rigs that are not built for it and they can't get over or around a rock, and so they start putting straps around it and winching it and moving it off the trail. It just seems crazy, right? Why would you do that? One. Two, you don't think it's going to get worse from there, right? And sometimes, sometimes maybe this rock was up and fell in, right? That might be, would that be acceptable? Like, let's say it's a, a trail we knew, and a big rock rolled off a, the side of a something and got in the way. Well, my first thought on that is it's kind of part of the game, right? It's part of the deal. Trails change. All right. So what about on uh, ducks? Real ter narrow and tight getting in there and a rock. You know, when we make that first turn, it's a S turn kind of, and then get into it. One falls into that S turn and we can't get in there anymore. Are we done? If it's, a, if it's an absolute showstopper, right, and there's no way over or around it um and like you said it's a trail where it's kind of straight through once you're in you're in and very difficult to to back out you can't turn around you know maybe i mean i'm sure there are circumstances where it's justifiable right but i don't think those are the things that we're talking about we're talking about the circumstances where oh i just you know I don't want to damage my rockers, my yeah, rock sliders. Yeah, be because of inexperience or some other um, error in judgment getting on this trail. Now you're doing a bunch of landscaping to help you in your, you know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're in a, a stock rig, mostly stock rig, and you're out doing trails, that's awesome. That's, you know, we want more people to do that make good use of public lands but um they're public they're everybody's they're not yours to to Redesign. rearrange um to suit your individual needs um and look sometimes stacking is necessary right sometimes you have a situation where you've got to get a vehicle 
through a trail. You've got to get them up and over an obstacle. Um, and one of the best tools to do that sometimes is, is rocks, right? But there's right. a difference between that and getting a group of people to just gather rocks and fill in an obstacle so that it's almost unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah. So is there, um, man, how do you define that, I guess? How many is too many? Well. And should they put them back if they do that? What if they get well, everybody up and I, then that whole group throws them out? Well, I mean, that would be something, I guess, but nobody does that. And I mean, the examples I'm thinking of, a hundred rocks is probably too many. <laughs> That's a lot. Right? Like, you've, you've taken an obstacle... You know, maybe it's about like as, as big as this desk, right? And you put so many rocks in there, it's just like like it wasn't there. Just cruise right up it. Um, I don't think that's um, treading lightly. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. That's not treading lightly. Um, right, does size matter? I've heard it does. <laughs> um, can you, uh, like, I mean, does it matter, like, how much, I mean, what if they drag a rock half the size of this table into that hole to get up and over it? Just one. That's under your 100 mark. Yeah, but it's completely changing the trail, right? So I'll give you another angle to look at this from, right? So you... Um, are going to go out on a trail and you've got some of your friends and you've been talking this trail up and, you know, it's supposed to be, I don't know, moderate to difficult. And then you get out there and a bunch of this nonsense has happened and it's now not challenging at all, right? So everybody's disappointed. You know, and, and I think leaving it, you know, um, to the best of your ability in, in the same shape you found it in is, is good, you know? What about, right? So, so that changes the trail, um, right? And like you just said, if, if, if we were talking it up, it really changes the trail for the next person um, one way or the other, good or bad. Uh, it also changes some difficulty rating on the trail, right? Right, so you're expecting yeah. one thing and you go into something else um well these these same folks are also cutting all kinds of new bypasses right you know so that too is you know you're not staying on a trail um so you're disfiguring the the landscape around you and again there's always going to be an exception there's always going to be a case where it's an emergency right Maybe you got to get somebody off the trail in an emergency, and so you, you know, that's that's a little different. To me, that's different than I didn't pay attention to the difficulty rating. I didn't read any of the reviews. I didn't watch any videos on this trail. Um, you know, my my vehicle's bone stock, and I've been driving for two months, and I'm going on a seven or eight rated trail. To me, that's. That's user error, right? That's being, you know, somewhat irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. Or taking people onto trails, right? If you're leading a group, right, you're out with your friends or a club or whatever, somebody should know the trail, and somebody should be able to assess the vehicles in that group and say, you know, we probably should do a different trail. Not it'll be okay. We'll just, you know, we've got a chainsaw. We'll cut down some trees and, um, you know, we'll build a fort, build a ramp for you. Right. Does it, does it count? All right. So let's, um, let's say it's a, it's a hard obstacle, right? And, um, you stack a bunch of rocks 
to not not assist you to you've stacked a lot of rocks right i mean i think we've all had a point where we've had to use rocks to assist us right Absolutely. for sure yeah um that's you, just you, you've got to clear a differential or something you're you're hard on you know a control arm frame you turtled yeah right um but not that right like you built a highway basically mm-hmm. does it still count that you made it over the obstacle no uh, so you are not giving out badges if you make it over that after building a... No. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, you got to get through the trail. That's that's understandable. But yeah, you didn't really conquer the trail. It's the same if... Um, and there's no shame. Like if you go to a, a, a difficult trail like, uh, say, Coyote Hills, and it's your first time on it, and maybe you're, you know... You're built, but you're not built, built, and you end up, you know, there's probably eight or nine significant obstacles on that trail, and and let's say you have to winch up half of them. There's no shame in that, right? It's just, it's part of the game, too, you know? And then maybe next time you'll be able to make it up two of those, right, that you had to winch on before, but but it's not... um, you completed the trail, but, you know, I mean, and there's people that will argue this both ways, right? Um, it's a win either way. Or if you if you had to winch, you, you didn't really. I don't know what the re- big deal is with winching. It's not a big deal. It you got to do it. You got to do it. It happens to all of us. That's why we have winches. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's why there's a lot of money and we use them. I mean. I, yeah, I don't understand that deal. Like, we we use them. We have to use them. We break. We get stuck. Whatever it is. Well, we, we had to put you on one uh, last week just so you didn't fall over. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, we had to. Probably should have stacked some rocks under I that thought, Yeah, I mean, it was looking like we were. Um, yeah, but there was no rocks to stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I didn't. I didn't fall off that ledge sideways yeah yeah that was crazy so. um yeah i mean like i said there's no shame in it it's it's part of the game but you know if you're on a trail where you know you have to winch most of it then you know that's you probably need to go back for redemption you know at some point yeah yeah and learn it right or yeah i mean there could be different reasons too right yeah it's I mean, not even we've we've been bad. on trails you know who hasn't been on a trail that they weren't built well enough for and right you, or you broke or any other thing that but honestly right so let's talk about that what about instead of stacking a bunch of rocks and filling in an obstacle completely changing the landscape wouldn't it be better to just say, you know what, I can't make this on my own power, um, or I can't make it with a little assistance from a couple of rocks? Pull line. It'd be yeah. faster. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what right? the. But I, th- I think honestly, I think when when we see these scenarios where things are completely filled in, um, it's because every vehicle in that group is going to use the same, right? Like nobody's built for it. Yeah, it's not a one-off need. Right, because if you want to leave the challenge for the rig behind you, you know, pull line and get up. Well, pulling line's a lot easier all the way around. Yeah, it's faster, it's less work, and it doesn't, if you're doing and it right, it doesn't mess anything up. I, 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 I don't know if there's some weird preconceived notion about pulling line, like, in our cases, when we pulled line, we've had to work to still get up it, right? We don't just drag the vehicle up, right? It's not like it's just we're hooking up and pushing the button and calling it good, right? Like we're still driving it, steering it, and using the line as an assist. It's not yeah. the elevator for us that I think is conceived of winching up something. Like I, I can't think of a time that we've winched up something just to winch up it for whatever right like it's been driving it holding on for dear life 
praying your line doesn't break. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't, like I don't trust the winch and the line that much. I've got to give it some power to right? it. Right, like it's it's an evolved process. Like, you know, watching everything, you know, so I don't I don't understand. Like, it's, Unless you don't have power. I mean, there's times, too, where you don't have yeah, yeah, yeah. a drivetrain. To... Yeah, that, that if you break, that's what I was kind of thinking about. Uh, but even then, it's still, you know, trying to keep your tires straight so they don't get bound up the wrong way as you're going up. Right, whatever it is, you know, it's still a process. It's not just set it and forget it. So, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know. I've never really thought about it. Winching usually when we're winching, we're just either in a real bad spot or we can't make it. But I've never really thought, does it help me when I winch to kind of feel what my Jeep's doing or anything? You know, I've never really thought about it that way. I've just winched and gone with it. But you know, next time I think maybe I'll try to be a little bit more conscious of it and see what my Jeep's doing on the winch to see if that's something I could have driven it driven into a little bit better or something like that. But I don't know. Well, <clears throat> I guess to summarize, I think that um, unless it's a, a real, you know, emergency, you probably shouldn't be moving obstacles off the trail right it's part of the trail it's an obstacle and frankly some of the examples we've seen wasn't even necessary yeah there's a bypass right next to it right right they're just doing it to claim that they made it up over it yeah i don't know yeah I don't. but um it's my two cents yeah i think the only thing i want to add right is uh, I think before this past weekend, it was kind of like stacking rocks, blah, 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 right? But I think we saw an interesting thing this weekend, right, at Wee Rock. I didn't know this was part of the rules, but you can use whatever's on the trail or on the course to help mm -hmm. you get through an obstacle, including stacking rocks. Yeah, and I mean, in that example on that um, course... They were doing that on a drop so that the rig didn't, right? It was right passing through cones so the rig didn't slip and hit the cone, right? Yeah, or it slipped the other way at least, right? It slipped down instead of twisting back up. So uh, it was an interesting use of rocks. Right, but in that environment, you're not really changing the environment. It's just a couple of rocks handy. And you're on these, you know, this monolith anyway. So, um, yeah. Right. You couldn't stack. There's not enough rocks, and you couldn't stack enough to really matter probably yeah. out there. My advice, kids, is, you know, try to get a good estimation of the trail before you go. Um, there are tools for that. Um, in addition to word of mouth, um, asking people but um there are trail guides there's you know documented sources that'll you know give you an idea of the difficulty rating um watch youtube videos those are generally going to show the most difficult and exciting parts of the trail anyway um it's most trail videos or highlight reels if they're not they're Boring. Super boring. Ten going, hours long. Going down a dirt road <laughs> for 30 minutes, you know. Um, but that'll give you an idea. I mean, sometimes it's too far the other way because, you know, it doesn't show that there are options to go around some of these obstacles, and so you think you're stuck with that. But if you look at a video and the trail looks like, you know, more challenging than you want to do, then... Uh, maybe pick a different one so that you don't have to bring your your pick and shovel and jackhammer. Um, and, you know, if at all possible, try not to cut a bunch of new bypasses. You know, um, if there's one there already and you can take advantage of it, great. But, I mean, I can say after, you know, writing trail guides and having them published over the last several years that um, those trails that I've 
done that for a lot of them. Uh, again, people don't really pay attention to the rating or the, you know, what's explained in the trail guide, and they get out there anyway, and then they end up just cutting up the countryside because they don't want to be on the trail. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, get out and wheel, but, you know, do it in stages. You don't have to head for the, you know, eight-level trails in your stock rig right away. You know, work your way up. Remember, like we talked last in one of the episodes, just because it's an eight here doesn't mean it's an eight somewhere else. Right. Right. And that's another thing. That's a good point. Um, We've learned that, you know, people have come from other areas where they do eights or nines and they come to New Mexico and it's a completely different can of worms that, you know, we had, uh, we had one last year, Chile challenge that, you know, based on the trail ratings and what they'd done, we think, okay. And then, you know, they couldn't get over the first obstacle. Yeah. On a six. But super nice guy. Yeah. All right. I think that is it on moving rocks and stacking rocks. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, you know, am I being uh, unduly harsh? Um, <laughs> or, and again, I'll say we, we all, at some point in time, you know, right? You use rocks, it's a tool, right? Sometimes it's faster and easier, safer than, you know, some other things. But uh, there's a difference between getting some clearance with a rock, getting up and over something, and completely paving the trail Yeah, yeah. with rocks and dirt. There's another one I'm thinking of now where they filled it in with dirt. Seems like a lot of work. But, I don't know. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, uh, Christian, Rockbiter 4x4, for giving us some feedback on the podcast. Uh, thank you to Kevin, Crazy KS, for some feedback on the podcast. If you guys see us, let us know what you think. That It really helped us. Um, feedback's really great. It, it, it really gives us something to talk about and think through and try to make it better for you guys, so... Let us know. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you guys next time. Later.